Uh, we're here now for a little bit of a Q&A. We've got about 20 minutes uh, or less. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoy the film. It is uh, very powerful. Yes. As you can see that it's 18 minutes with no dialogue. Can you imagine doing a feature film with no dialogues? It was extremely difficult to communicate in a visual language that internationally anybody can understand watching the film. Although, the film is a lot much deeper. Every time you watch it, and I gotta tell you, I probably watch it over a hundred times, and I always see the nuances and symbolism that I wanna put in, and I also wanna put so much more in to the feature film, which is in pre-development that we're gonna uh, film internationally over the four continents, Asia, Europe, uh, South America, and US. And uh, toward the end of the year, we're gonna be doing that major production. And I wanna say that this two sculpture that you saw here is a Fahman Ohm from the Quantum Mechanics series. But tonight, when you go to the gallery, you're actually gonna see the maquette, the smaller version of it, which is the birth of these two sculptures that I've never actually shown before. And this is the first time that's been released for collectors to uh, acquire. And it is very powerful in all my life. I've wanted to create this, and I wanna thank you again for the art patrons that made this possible. And without you, my dream of uh, communicating to the world would be lost because you know, this is the end of my line. There's no children, no legacy left. This is my legacy, my art and Randy's art. And uh, it's for our children and the future generation to understand universal truth and math and hopefully with the help of these great um, directors and producers uh, to make it happen that we're gonna make a huge difference in Hollywood and recently, you know, I went to the Oscar and you know a Vietnamese American war yes. 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 Uh, an actor. Can you imagine hopefully later on that we can make all the difference too, so thank you for supporting me So just to give you guys a little background this film started out as sort of this idea that came about last July, where Daniel and Angel said, oh, well, let's do a video about the quantum mechanics of and film. Um, it turned into something significantly bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Angel, uh, my hat's off to you. Andrew, you, you brought to us uh, the kind of organization and uh, <laughs> get it done that uh, assistant directors need to do. So to both of you, I express my appreciation. I know Daniel is grateful to you as well. So shall we open up for questions? Uh, anyone have a question about the creation movie? Raise your hand and uh, we'd love to answer some of your questions here. Just raise your hand. Yes. Go ahead, Alan. So congratulations on the creation. This is my second time seeing the film. Uh, and I've seen some other extra things that actually pop out in my mind. So the first thing that popped up my mind is that, you know, we might be facing World War III. So as World War III comes, where you have the creation begins with where the destruction ends. So that's where I imagine World War III would end. And the, an artist like you, Sir Daniel, would create uh, Adam and Eve. And this is where the adaptation of creations come from. So my question for you is, on the feature film, can you give us a little bit hint of what is expected? Andrew? Andrew, by the way, is the uh, script writer for the feature film as well. By the way, before you answer that, uh, don't forget your brochure. It has the uh, treatment that Andrew did. Read that. It doesn't have the actual script, but it has a treatment, and it's uh, pretty good. So go ahead, Andrew. That was a good question. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, it's going to be grand and more epic and, and everything up two, three, four times. Uh, as far as what Daniel mentioned earlier is we're trying to cross over all the continents. And you mentioned World War III, which I don't like to say or want to think about or anything, I understand, but we're, the point of this speech is we're going across the world and we, and we want to make everyone one and, and, and everyone's a part of this. Uh, doesn't matter what language, doesn't matter the conflict, everyone can enjoy the feature and understand the message. 
Um, of just sometimes you have to create from destruction. Um, and it's not the nicest thing, it's sometimes a, a, a dangerous thing, but I think we're all in this together and, and, and we're bringing everyone in. So the feature is gonna definitely delve into that um, completely, so. Thank you, Andrew. Maybe I can say the gentleman wants to tell you a congratulation of the, the feature film. I do feature film, I do action movies. And you guys did a great job. I think you got huge potential for merchandise, you know, and you're very commercial. You can do cross the board and you can just take Dwayne Johnson from Vaseline, come to be the biggest stars in Hollywood. And I thank you all for bringing you to the world. Thank you very much for that. Yes, go ahead, question here. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the film, everything from sound design to light and just the little nuances, everything was really, really fantastic. Um, I'm curious from the artist's point of view, you do a lot of what's really hard in, in showing, not telling, especially with the dialogue or no dialogue. Uh, I'm curious to know about the pre-production process and with your artist background, how you kind of did maybe some storyboarding or did you do, was there any genesis to the production design and like the shot selection um, or was it more organic? Uh, I would say 90% of everything is organic. Uh, the only thing that we had to expedite was the sculpting. Sometimes the sculpture takes about three months to a year to create. We had to condense all this into one week to filming, so obviously I have to prepare everything in advance. It's a very arduous process to create, and you mentioned, uh, it, was there a genesis of this? Uh, I think everything happens for a reason. This was actually very serendipitous. Uh, the scene that you saw at the desert, uh, it was so funny. Um, we had a budget, and by the way, I know how Hollywood work with budget, and I'm like, okay, uh, it's ridiculous that we spent so much money in, in the movie, but for this movie, we didn't spend as much. But at the, uh, we wanted to have rain at the desert scene because it's important and vital because of the elements. And it never rains in Joshua Tree. But when we th were there, we were thinking, okay, we need to ha get uh, a pump, electricity, because we're out of nowhere. We gotta get a huge truck for water to do the rain and what happens. And when we look at the budget, we're like, there's no way that we're gonna be able to do that. <laughs> so when we actually went there, we started filming and all of a sudden, the clouds come in, the thunder start roaring. And literally, we had 10 minutes. I'm sitting in the trailer and they said, Daniel, make up now. And I'm like, what, we're not shooting in an hour. And they said, no, the clouds come in, the rain's coming. So literally, I had to go make up on and literally 10 minutes, jump right up and start raining. And that's where you saw the scene. So everything I think was done uh, was, was created organically, but more, I think there was a higher force that really wanted this film to happen. And right now, even, I think there's somebody up there that wants a feature film to be made as well. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Yes. Daniel, thank you for putting together this work. Every time I think that you can, can inspire and create, you always exceed beyond my imaginations. So this film is a true predicament to that, or a true testament to that. When I was thinking about your film and I was watching it, I thought of the philosopher king, the Aristotelian, going into the cave, creating man and woman. And I thought about the representation of both the use of glass and then the use of iron. And I wondered the, the, whether that was a philosophical decision that you, that you thought about when you were creating it. And then also, what were the challenges in using those two very stark different mediums in terms of creating the sculpture, the beautiful sculptural work that you created? Two questions. Uh, one is, uh, what is the thoughts of why I use the glass or the crystal and looks like ice? I wanted a symbolism of ice that melts into water, and water when it solidifies into ice, and in a sense that the law of physics that nothing can be created or destroyed. In essence, we are all pretty much eternal, that when we leave this world, we become part of the earth, and the earth creates us again. So this is just a borrowed organic shell. So the glass or the ice is supposed to represent immortality, that it's in transition in one shell going to the next. And your question in terms of how difficult it is, uh, as an artist, I push the limit what I am able to do at three different foundries. Uh, sometimes when I walk in the foundry, they run away. They say, Daniel is here, we can't do this. He's gonna ask something and he doesn't understand the word no. And so as an artist, I push what I can uh, to the maximum. If they say no, I literally get into the kiln, open it and say, this is how you do it. Because I'm not your typical artists uh, of the past, current, or possibly even future. I want to pave the way for artists out there, generation, to see that everything is possible. This film is possible. My art is possible. 
how do you merge uh, lucite, the glass, into bronze and stainless steel? They said it's impossible, but you know what? I don't understand that word impossible, and I don't understand the word no. So I answer your question. Um, I would say manifest and make it happen. That's what we did here. And by the way, I also want to point out that that same philosophy with the sculpture about not accepting the word no applied to making this film as well. <laughs> yeah, he kept saying, what is the budget? No. And I said, uh, excuse me, I was listening to something else. And I go back to Angel here. Angel goes, Angel, you told me the budget was this. And he looked at me and says, yeah, but Daniel, you wanted this. You wanted caviar with, you know, boiled eggs prices. And I said, yeah, so. <laughs> Humor there. Next question, please. Yes. Yes, Corey. Daniel, it's not the first time I watched you know, the movie. Actually, the second time. For those one who actually watched the movie, The Passion of Christ, I think this movie should be Save the Passion of Daniel. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, it is my creation. Thank you. And uh, oh, actually, it's a fact of all of us. Ah, the great question. Yes, well, you know, that's a great question, and actually, I'm glad you asked that, because the director, Angel, and uh, we're joining the DP, and, uh, and uh, Andrew here, they want to make this as an anthology. So the next direction, what you're seeing tonight at the gallery, is going to be the quantum mechanics of Thamon Ohm and the birth of the maquette. And you're going to see what Randy mentioned before, is holding time. So my next series is about time and space. Because the time and space, um, goes in line of something that is very surreal to me. And in about a couple of years, as you know, is the 50 year anniversary of the fall of Vietnam. And uh, George hasn't mentioned it, but he's actually in uh, pre-production of doing a screen script for, I think, uh, based on my life. And it's a pretty, uh, it's a biopic, it's very intense, and it deals with also time and the space where I am right now. It's very uh, powerful, and that's the next direction, is the vision of time and space that applies to all of us. All right, a couple more questions, and then, yes. Graham. Yes, how are you? Um, I'm good, buddy. Magnificent job of taking something and it being nonverbal and just taking it and making it so profoundly verbal. I mean, it's just magnificent. I just uh, enjoy your journey, and the thing about it is just, you're not even your best rendition yet, so <laughs> that's just really scary. Do any of the films, or if you plan, are uh, any of them going to have verbal or any dialogue? Right now, uh, the feature film for creation will be no dialogue again. So as you can see, we're going to step up to the plate and it's going to be incredibly intensely difficult to do. However, the feature film that I believe George is uh, in process right now, that will be a biopic with uh, words. Randy, you want to say something about I think that movie? Yeah, the, the feature film, George has agreed to direct it. He said it's a small song. Um, the feature film will focus on a, really a story that I know is common to many of the people in our audience. Uh, the life of a war refugee. Uh, orphaned, and then not orphaned, and then brought to the US, uh, and striving to pursue and achieve the American dream. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions. We have 10 minutes left. Uh, yes. TV, if I'm, uh, what, what TV station? It's Little Saigon TV. Hi, I'm Julie Yu from LS TV. Um, thank you, first of all, for giving us the exclusive interview today to uh, interview you and Randall uh, for this creation team. I know that as we watch this um, beautiful rendition of your art and your, your theory and what you're creating, there's a lot of Uh, what is the most profound way to connect with others? I think is, I, I would say, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and just 
listen to each other in a sense verbally, what language you speak, but what you mentioned about the, there's no dialogue, but yet it's music. And I'm gonna actually let Angel, because he was the one that made the music. Some of the, a lot of the score was actually by Angel here that he created, and I'm listening to every second of it. So Angel, why don't you explain a little bit about the music, how you communicate in that? Well, thank you for coming uh, tonight. Um, I'm very shocked watching this film again. I watched it like more than 200 times. Uh, I, I was having like a, a, a few uh, nights with uh, Jordan, with uh, Daniel, and um, it's like my first time. We were shooting uh, this uh, uh, creation uh, short film, and then with Daniel, we thought that the music has to be part of the dialogue. Uh, because uh, as a um, experimental film, obviously the dialogue is on the side. So we have to just create some music. We were kind of like looking for three or four um, people who can help us with music, composers, but at the end, Daniel and myself, we were working every night looking for the best music possible we can just put on each scene. And the music was wonderful. The music uh, um, we, that we used uh, is unique for each scene. A lot of people, they love it. As, um, the work that uh, Jordan did with, uh, with the cinematography, the lighting, and the music, and obviously Daniel doing the sculpturing or, or doing something on the scene, depending on the scene, it was just unique. I mean, I think we got the best uh, part of this uh, uh, film choosing the music because the music is uh, the spirit of this music. I mean, of this uh, the short film. The music, the scene, the lighting, it was part of the, I think the, 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 the most important part of the, of the film. Yes, I think to answer your question, you have to feel it. It's like when you're next to someone that you care for or want to communicate or connect, you just have to feel it, whether it's through your senses of sound, sight, or even touch. You just have to feel to understand each other, so hopefully we've communicated that through the short film. We have time for one last question. Yes, up there, yes. Hi, thank you. I'm from Shine TV, I'm Jessica. Um, there is so much depth and so much light and darkness um, in the film. It's very beautiful, congratulations, you guys. Um, I just want to ask you. You mentioned a while, you know, you, you mentioned about symbol, a lot of symbol, and there's. I want to know, for you, what is the symbol of humanity for you, and what transpired you? You said you said something about creation starts from destruction. What transpired you to say that that everything begins, the creation began from destruction? The symbolism in the movie is uh, when I say creation begins when destruction ends. It applies not just uh, through religion, because some people will look at this film as very religious. Some will look at it as very scientific. Some will look at it as sci-fi, uh, spiritual. Uh, it doesn't matter how you look at the film or f it's how you feel about it. When I say creation begins where destruction ends is uh, my way of saying that my life uh, has been a lot through chaos. And through that chaos is where order comes in. In this world, all of us experience the same thing. There will be no life without the appreciation of uh, with understanding death. There's no uh, light without dark. There's no sweet without the sour. What I want to communicate for us to understand whether it is uh, scientifically, spiritually, or religiously, is that embrace everything that's been handed to you in this short, brief time in this organic shell. It's very brief. And it's not necessarily one is better than the other, but it is as necessary because without death, life would be meaningless. So if something harsh happens to your life, embrace it because it's part of an experience of this journey that we are experiencing. So I want people to see and understand that destruction is necessary for creation to begin because without destruction, what is creation? It's meaningless. So that's what I'm trying to communicate and hopefully with the major feature film, it will communicate so much more. This is just only like an appetizer. The entree is on its way. <laughs> Uh, and last, I want to put one plug in. I went to the Oscars, as you can see, no. I want to mention one thing about the wardrobe. In here, I want to thank Jacob Meyer for the, for the stars. A lot of the uh, people tonight, I noticed, are wearing his couture clothes. He designs for Madonna, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, uh, you name it. 
And of course, he designed for, for Sir Daniel Wynn as well, and I see a lot of you wearing it. So thank you, Jacob, for making this film incredible with your design. Thank you very much, everyone. At this point, we need to wrap up. Don't forget to validate. Save some money for the Asian World Film Festival. <laughs> See, that's why I love George to produce this film. He's going to watch every penny. I like a very frugal director. He can bring a $100 million movie down to maybe a million. Actually, you, know, you, know, you know, you saw what happened at the Oscars, right? Actually, you know what's so funny? The feature movie came in uh, with a script initially, and this is, goes to Andrew. So we got a budget for the feature movie of this film. And we sat down, and this is real brief, it's a funny story. And uh, George looks at him, uh, Andrew says, all right, bottom line, what's the budget for the feature of creation? Because I'm trying to protect Daniel here. So the number, he's like, Andrew's like, oh, okay, here's the number. George looks at him, he's like, what the hell? We can do Ben-Hur movie with this. <laughs> So, George, thank you, and uh, I would love to see everyone at the gallery right now. It's a beautiful reception, and you're gonna see my latest collection, Light Matter, that has been in the works for the last six months, and you're gonna see the Farman Om the Maquette, the birth of the actual life size of this. You see one of the life sizes there, but I hope that you enjoy the exhibit at the gallery, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if everyone could uh, exit promptly, we do have another show starting in here in just a few minutes.